This is Math 5700, Lecture 47. This will be the last uh, time I lecture on new material. Uh, and any remaining videos I record will be review, if any. So my plan in this lecture is to, first of all, review 8.3 again. Uh, quickly, and then uh, cover the main result of 8.4. So let me remind you what happened in 8.3. That was the central limit theorem, which is to be regarded as the capstone result of this whole course. I'm going to abbreviate it as CLT. So let's recall the setup. Suppose we have x1, x2, x3, dot, 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 an infinite sequence of i, i, d that is independent, identically distributed, random variables. And the setup is that the expected value of the xi's, which are all the same, is a, have a common value mu, and uh, and sigma uh, sigma squared is the variance of all the xi's. Okay, so now there are two two random variables I associate with these given random variables. There's first of all the sample mean, which is x bar sub n. I'm, I'm putting an n here because the sample mean deter is determined, depends upon the size of the sample, and, and that's in this case, it's n. Okay, and we also have the sum, which is, I'll call it sn, x1 plus dot 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 plus xn. Okay, so here are the three formula. I'm going to give you three formulations. So uh, this, so see, here are the three different ways of formulation, formulating the central limit theorem. The first way to formulate it is, and this is the way we formulated it initially last time. If we take the limit as n goes to infinity of the probability of the sum minus n times mu over sigma times the square root of n is less than or equal to a. So let's so let a be any positive real number. And we look at uh, how far this normalized random normalized sum is less than or equal to a. That's the cumulative distribution function of that random variable evaluated at a. And that in the limit, that's given by phi of a, where phi is associated is the is the CDF of the of of n zero one. Okay, so that's the first the first formulation. The second formulation, which occurred in my last lecture, is if I take the limit as n goes to infinity of the normalized version of the sample mean of the sample means. But I now now I subtract mu and divide by sigma over the square root of n, and it's then I also get phi of a. And the third way I want to formulate it is in a way that's easy to remember. If we look at x, the sample means, so for each n we get a different sample mean. This is a sequence of random variable x n bar. X n bar converges. to n mu, uh, the variance is sigma squared over, over n. So the standard deviation would be sigma over the square root of n as n goes to infinity. So this is, these are all equivalent formulations of the central limit theorem. So that is, uh, that is uh, what I wanted to recall from 8.3. So that's the central limit theorem. And this is probably the most important result in the whole course. I'm not going to prove it. The proof is too hard and takes too long. Okay, so uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to talk about 8.4. And 8.4 uh, is, is, is about the law, uh, the strong law of large numbers. So I'm going to formulate that.
So let me give that uh, an abbreviation, LLN. Okay, uh, so same setup as the, the central limit theorem. So it, you have a sequence, x1, x2, dot, 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 uh, an infinite sequence of i, i, d, random variables. So, uh, and so we have, again, the expected value of x i will be mu. In the statement I'm going to make, we don't even uh, mention the variance because it, it, the law of large numbers is really about the sample mean. So we consider x bar sub n the sample mean uh, and uh, which is given by, of course, x1 plus dot, 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 x sub n. We take the first n of these in the sequence and divide by n. And uh, so the statement is, the statement of the LLN, there, I'm going to formulate it in a sort of informal way, first of all. So the statement goes like this. So I'm gonna, the informal version of the statement is, is that the sample means uh, tend to the the to mu mu is often called the population mean in statistics it's the mean of the district the original uh, uh it's the mean of the of the underlying distribution so x n bar n tends to mu with probability one that's the that's the slogan, okay? But I'm gonna give you the mathematical formulation now. So that here, uh, so IE, let A be bigger than zero, be any, be any real number. Make it a small real number. So then we can take the limit as N goes to infinity of the probability of uh, what we do is we look at the absolute, the difference between the sample mean and mu, uh, and then take the absolute value of that and ask that the, the, the distance between the, uh, between the sample mean and mu be less than a, what's the probability of that? And as n goes to infinity, this is actually going to be equal to one. In other words, uh, xn, well, xn bar converges to the sample mean, uh, to the population mean, which I wrote above. So I don't need to write it again. So how do we, here's a concrete example, a coin flip, a fair coin flip. We repeatedly flip the, a coin, so x i equal the uh, the uh, is the value is one if heads on the ith flip. So suppose I flip a coin, uh, uh, then uh, what do we expect? Suppose I flip a coin ten times. We expect the number of times heads appear in the 10 flip, roll, uh, flips of the coin, the number of heads should be approximately a half of, of 10, which is about five times. But that's not always going to happen. It could happen that you get four heads, or you get six heads, or you get three heads, or you get seven heads. But typically, if I flip it a lot of times, like 100 times or 1,000 times, the uh, so suppose I flip it a million times. On the average, you would expect five hundred thousand uh, five hundred thousand times heads to appear, and it's not exactly going to be five hundred thousand times you're going to get heads, but it's going to be pretty close to five hundred thousand times, and that's really what happens as the number of if I take more and more flips of the coin. If I go to a billion or a trillion. 
I, I get the, this, the mean of the sample, that is the, num the number of times I flip, I take the mean, that should, uh, that should be very close to one half, right? Uh, and, and, and that's what it's saying. That's what the, uh, the, the law of large numbers says in that case. Well, that's all I wanted to say about the law of large numbers. Um, and uh, I don't have any applications here of the law of large numbers. They're not, they're not going to be any on your, on your last exam. So, uh, any, uh, so I think that's it for the course. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed uh, doing this, maybe not as much as being in person and, 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 and being in front of students, but it was still a fun course to teach. So uh, be well. <laughs>